These walking talks are starting to get a little redundant, except for this time it wasn't against an offensive or defensive juggernaut. It was against Mississippi State, Arkansas losing 7-3. Just a pathetic offensive performance. I actually asked Danny West as I was leaving the press box, you kind of want to just Terry Hart side and just look despondent in the background, maybe add a little bit of levity to this walk and talk, but it's not like it could get any more comical. He declined, by the way, obviously. Uh, let's not pretend that um, <laughs> that jobs aren't on the line right now. I mean, Arkansas just lost their six in a row. Uh, the offensive line is terrible. Uh, they can't pick up any blitzes with the backs or, you know, tight ends can't block. I mean, it's just the whole offensive system. KJ was off additionally today. And I mean, whether you're talking about the offensive line coach or offensive coordinator, it wouldn't surprise me to see like literal mid-season changes. Just by the way that Sam Pittman answered some of the questions today. And, Let's not pretend that his job isn't on the line also. I mean, you can't just win six in a row and your program continually just go down and down and down. I asked him in the press conference, if you would have told me four years ago that the offensive line was going to be a problem with a Sam Pittman coach team in year four, I wouldn't have believed you. And I just, how did it get this bad? How did it get to the situation that they're in? Obviously, it was a huge problem changing offensive coordinators like they did at the time. Let's get you a look at the stadium. Changing offensive coordinators was uh, unfortunate uh, with the timing of it, but it doesn't matter if you can't block anybody. And maybe that's part of the offensive system, but it's not like they've recruited well or poorly on paper with the offensive line. Now let's talk about the team that they just faced. They were 0-3. They lost to, they got smoked by Alabama at home. They got smoked by LSU at home. And they lost to a South Carolina team that's only beaten Furman. Those are, those are <laughs> some of the games they played. I mean, Arkansas played all these teams tough on the road. Here's another close loss. What's Arkansas one and nine out of the last 10 in one possession games? I mean, that's a really bad, really bad trend. And, um, you know, everybody knows I like Sam Pittman. You probably like him too. Maybe you like him less now. But, uh, I mean, you got to call it like you see it. And this, this situation is, is really bad. And, I mean, are they going to go to Florida and get this thing righted or something? I mean, they'll probably play him to one possession and lose. I mean, based on what we've seen in the past and today. What was that crap at halftime? Like right before, like, hell, I can't even remember when it was, the field goal. Like, what, what, what was going on there? I just don't, I don't understand. Like, you saw what Mississippi State did also. Like, you know, they got a fourth and one, and they go up there, and they run some hard count stuff, and then they just take the penalty and then punt the ball. Why does Arkansas want to do that similar thing and, but call a timeout to, just to punt the ball? And then you've got the play clock running down. Just call the timeout there. And Pittman says he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He couldn't think fast enough. Just call the timeout then. That's when you call a timeout if you need to think about something. And it, it would have been a 51-yard field goal. Cam can make that. He can make a 56-yard field goal. And you came out and punted it. You got a great punt off. I mean, this was as li alive as the stadium was down here in the end zone. And then, well, they got a 30-yard pass after one false start after another, and then they got a 30-yard pass to get out of it. Uh, defense, let's, let's talk about the defense because they played outstanding. Again, they played better than they should have. I mean, this is a team that was, you know, down to their backup quarterback. You know, both teams are beat up and stuff. But the defense just played lights out, and it's just such a shame that the defense is wasted on just such a daft offense I don't, and KJ played terrible today. Like, I think that's the worst I've ever seen KJ play. And I hate it for him, but like, not only, like, first of all, you can't tell if the play calling is decent or not. I don't think it is. I'm not saying that, but you can't even tell because they can't block. And then KJ has got to be in his own head. He's one hop in passes. He's not seeing open receivers downfield. And who can blame him when all he can probably think about is getting slammed in the back because you can't block for him. I just I don't understand how the offensive line got to this point. I don't know if I've ever seen it like this. I don't know if I've ever seen an offense this bad. I mean, maybe back in the Danny Ford days when it was getting bad, I, I'm having a hard time remembering back then. Like, but even Chad is incompetent as they looked at times on offense. And it, you know, against teams like Alabama and Georgia, sure we've seen worse than this. Uh, have we? We've seen equal. 
I mean, I guess we've seen them get blanked, but guys, this is an offense or defense at Mississippi State that's like they're giving up 29 and a half points a game. They're like that's like 92nd or something nationally. They're giving up a ton of total yards. They're like in the hundreds out of 131 teams. This is not this is not a defense that blanks people. People are putting up points pretty freely on them. I mean, talking to Mississippi State riders, they're like, they can't stop anybody. Yeah, they can. <laughs> I mean, it stinks that it's the situation that it's in. It's year, year four. There are four games left. They got to win every one of them. So they're going to go to the swamp after this bye week. And that's, you know, it's a bye week. And, you know, that's when changes happen a lot of times. It would not surprise me to see anything, to see changes. I mean, it's just where it is. You're backed into a tough corner. I asked Sam Pittman about that. Like, what's the answer with this team? I don't know. I don't know that they have answers. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm as expected. You know, Arkansas just played a football game, so I feel like crap. Just like everybody watching. So they're going to Florida. They're going to get knocked out of bowl eligibility. Probably play. I don't know. I mean, the fact that Sam has kept this locker room together the way he has so far is pretty remarkable. Um, defense is battling. The offense is just inept. I don't know that, like, I mean, like, there's some historical things. I'm, like, going back through my head. Like, when has Arkansas had a multi-year starter returning at quarterback? What's up? Thanks for watching. Multi-year starter at quarterback where – the offense is that inept all of a sudden. I mean, it, like, there's a lot of personnel back. It's like, I know that they've had some issues at tackle, obviously, but, you know, they lost Dalton Wagner last year, who would have made a practice squad. Um, they lost Luke Jones, who just retired from football on the offensive line. But they got a lot back also. Like, and I know Rockets out, but they also had, you know, a good crew of running backs that, um, there's just no space for them on offense. And yes, there's personnel issues, but I'm, I think it's more than that. I think, you know, this offense just doesn't suit who they have up there. How y'all doing? There's a lot of people. I never get totally comfortable walking and talking in front of people, even still. We could probably ask some people what they think about the game. I don't know what else to say. Like, we've already pretty much covered everything. Like, wouldn't surprise me to see changes mid-season. How's it going? Yeah, I saw you. I pre oh, thank you. We're in the middle of one right now. So, I mean, what else is there to cover? Wouldn't surprise me to see, like, mid-season changes. I don't know if it's going to fix anything. You know, Pittman's been spending more time with the offensive line, but that hasn't really produced any results. Nothing, well, like, we, we haven't seen anything positive from that. I mean, why can't they, why can't they just get it together? Why can't they just get this football program together? It's been 35 days since you had a home game. And you come out and trot the fans out. You have, what, 71,000 people bought tickets. It's probably like 63, 64 in there, maybe about that. And this is, this is what you give them. So you had a great environment for BYU at home. And, you know, you lost that one by seven. And then you go on the road for over a month and you come back and this is what you give them. Like, can you blame the fans for being upset or apathetic? I mean, I know for me personally, I don't want to have to do this, but like we're going to have to shift some of our focus to basketball like we're going to do that anyway with basketball season starting up but probably a little bit more than normal just because we don't have any choice nobody wants to read about how bad the offense sucks over and over again the whole thing has just been awful i i don't it's, i feel like i'm just repeating myself and I know last week I was like, you know, talking about, I didn't even know what I said last week. I was like, why is everybody in the comments saying I'm going to quit the walk? I'm not, I'm not quitting the walk and talk. So don't worry about that. 
but I am just, I'm just frustrated and I'm tired and I'm wondering how I'm going to get th through this thing without going on a cussing tirade sometimes and, and being actually able to say how I feel about the situation. But, you know, you have, you have game management issues that pop up, and that's discouraging when I look at, you know, how Sam Pittman has managed some of the things in-game. Like the field goal, like calling timeouts to punt, the misuse of timeouts. Um, you know, the like, and he's right, like the end of the game, they had like 219 or something left for their final possession, and he just kind of takes the clock down. He's right. Did you see the rest of the game? I'm just trying to get out of the half. But there weren't any... There weren't any adjustments that worked, at least, coming out of halftime. There's no reason for this football program to be in such shambles. You, I know you can't keep changing coaches every year or every few years, but that's what Arkansas has had to do. But there's no reason this program should be in the shape it's in. And people can point to, you know, you're not immediately close to high-level talent. You had to reach out farther to get talent so you don't have that radius right around you. NIL and Transfer Portal can change all of that for Arkansas in a po very positive way. But everything else you need is here. You see the venue I just left? There's nobody going on TV saying, hey, we need you to donate to this because we need this or that. We need this in facilities or that in facilities. I mean, at this point, it's just like, how ridiculous can we make the facilities for the players? But everything is here that you need to win from an academic standpoint, athletic standpoint, facilities, fan support is there. They want to be there for you. The fans want to be there. I mean, to be honest, like really, when you look at some other programs around the SEC and around the country, like Arkansas fans are trying to be there, but they don't deserve this. And they just don't. I mean, they, they put too much into it. Hey, oh, hey, Mimi. Hey, Joel. Okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. So, yeah, I don't know. Nothing else to say about it. Hope you guys have enjoyed Curtis Wilkerson's basketball content. Our new guy, Grant Baker, Andrew Ellis. Got a lot of good basketball stuff coming for you at Hog Sports. Anyway, tough situation to be in. Hate it for Sam, but I mean, like he said, he's the guy responsible for this whole thing. And he definitely pulled Arkansas out of a hole great fit culturally for Arkansas. Kind of reminded me a lot of what Houston Nutt did his first year here, but it's, it hasn't been sustained. And the days of like my Texas walk and talk, it's been a long time now. So, I mean, going from, you know, nine wins to six wins to not making a bowl game. Well, I guess it was eight wins. Regular, we're talking regular season here. Eight wins to six wins to not making a bowl game. It's not a good trend. And, uh, you know, you run into a situation where, you know, not only does apathy set in, but when you get to an off season, um, man, it can get so toxic, you know, just from your efforts trying to work the transfer portal, your efforts in recruiting, uh, just to how the fans feel, you know, and, and how they react to it. And, you know, if you, I mean, if you're Hunter Juracek and, you know, you're looking at the situation and, you know, you retain the staff and things don't go well the next year, and then, uh, you know, then that's on you. They start pointing to you, why did you make that decision? And he knows that, he's aware of that. And, you know, it's not like things can't get turned around. You can change the thing. I mean, look what they did with the defense. The defense, the defense was the offense last year. You know, this defense was the offense last year. And look how fast they turned it around. It's just unfortunate that you didn't see these issues popping up on the offense and weren't able to get them figured out, and now you're where you're at. All right, we're almost to the car. How's it going? We're almost to the car. Well, we got a couple more weeks for the next game here. 
what is it, Auburn? Auburn, who's not very good, but has reasons not to be good because they had a coaching change. I mean, year one, like, you won't ever hear me saying, like, somebody's just is a disaster and not going to get the job done because it's, it's a hard turnaround year one. The offensive, I mean, they just can't block, and it's not just the offensive line that the tight ends can't block. The running backs can't pick up blitzes. It's all you have to do against Arkansas is blitz them because they can't pick it up. The best play they had today was K.J. Jefferson scrambling. The pocket collapsed. No explosive plays. No plays over 20 yards. All right, everybody. That's it. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. Be sure to check out Hog Sports for our post-game coverage. I can't, you can't wait for it. And uh, a ton of stuff from the basketball game last night. Got basketball to take our minds off of it a little bit. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.